Every good story needs a good ending, and if you trip up when bowing out, you can be rest assured that people will remember that more than anything else you actually accomplished. As a result, endings in film are stressed over, often changing between script and production, on set, or after showing a group of people and asking them, what do you think? Whatever the reason though, the films we're talking about today have gone through changes that very few people can say they've seen both sides of. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 movie endings you can no longer see. Number 10, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Whilst everyone remembers the Blair Witch Project as the film that popularised the found footage idea, one thing that remains unappreciated is the ambiguity of its ending. Whilst its sequel largely forewent the shaky camera of the original, director Joe Berlinger intended to keep a similar tone in Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2. After visiting the site of the original mysteries, a teenage group of ragtag Blair Witch fans find themselves accused of murdering a group of tourists that they'd encountered on the way. The planned conclusion saw the main cast plead not guilty, but a found videotape shows otherwise, twisting the narrative that the film had shown us and leaving the audience questioning the truth. Furthermore, the film was given a purposeful linear narrative to give the story a descent into madness feeling. After Berlinger showed his film to the studio, however, it seems as though they went about changing just as much as they could muster. In order to make it more contemporary, they requested more violence in the final act and additional shots were filmed that sapped the intended ambiguity of the tourists' deaths. The studio also cut the film's final scene into pieces and interspersed it throughout the story, changing the film's linear descent into, well, a mess. Thankfully, hardcore Blair Witch fans have done the best they can to restore Berlinger's vision to decent results, but hindsight editing can't help the film's critical admonishment. Number 9, Doctor Strangelove. Doctor Strangelove has one of cinema's most striking conclusions. Faced with the looming reality of worldwide nuclear war, eccentric scientist Doctor Strangelove rises unexpectedly from his wheelchair with a plan to stop the destruction, and explosions suddenly go off around the world. Audiences were left with a sarcastic laugh of despair that no other film in its era could achieve. It also has one of the industry's most discussed alternative endings that is nearly too balmy to be believed. In the original script, the film continued with a pie fight in the Pentagon's war room. This 1960s classic originally closed by parodying the war front with a battle of cream and pastry. So close was this to being the case that not only was it shot, it was also shown to test audiences that included critics. Director Kubrick felt that the final scene became too farcical, and worse yet, his actors had lost focus in the fun of the pie throwing and had actually started laughing on camera. The final nail came when a preview of the film was due to land on the same day as the real-life assassination of John F. Kennedy. The line in the scene that exclaimed, Our gallant young president has been struck down in his prime, suddenly felt too close to the bone. Thus, Kubrick found the right point to cut the final scenes off of Strangelove, and they haven't ever been seen since. Number 8, Scream 2022. It's rare that alternate endings are shot with the intention of never using them, but that's exactly the case with the return to the world of Ghostface. The 2022 Scream film brought back a series of actors from the series' heyday of the 1990s, including Sidney, Neve Campbell, Gail, Courtney Cox, and Dewey, David Arquette, to fight against the return of slasher Ghostface, and not all of them make it out alive. Sacrificing himself for Tara, one of the new kids on the block for the franchise, Dewey is stabbed to death. Apparently, this was a hot topic between the film crew and the studio. During production, directing duo Matt bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette were asked to shoot an alternate fate for the character. As such, they decided to make it unusable. The scene shown to the studio will likely never see the light of day, not just because it doesn't serve the story, but it's apparently intentionally rubbish. It consists of a badly framed over-the-shoulder shot of some doctor's legs, with a pair offering the studio that this is where they could put a voiceover or something to say that Dewey had surgery and survived. A sneaky alternate ending made out of spite, and to make sure that their original vision for the story stayed in Intact. Number 7, Event Horizon. Event Horizon tells the story of a space anomaly that defies reality, showing unlucky bystanders their greatest fears and possessing them in order to pull passing ships into its grasp. After absolutely flopping upon release, the film's unexpected surge of DVD sales caught the attention of both director Paul W.S. Anderson and Paramount Pictures. Hoping to capitalise, Anderson agreed to put together a director's cut. The film's final moments see a fight between Miller and a resurrected Dr. Weir, possessed by the now sentient Event Horizon ship. This was not the only proposed ending, 
however, and one which involved Miller facing off with the Burning Man he sees in his dreams had tested negatively in front of audiences and went unused. However, the director's cut DVD never materialised and thus neither did this scene. Asked what became of the project in the ensuing years, Anderson said that it would never release due to the sheer fact that most of it doesn't exist anymore. In 2012, a VHS tape from the shooting of the movie was found that gave its cult audience hope, but even today Anderson says that the project is indefinitely scrapped. We can only assume that this mysterious VHS, presumably tucked away in Anderson's private library, has the secrets that Event Horizon fans seek and an alternate ending we'll quite likely never see. Number 6. Brazil According to Universal, who were set to handle the US release of Terry Gilliam's Brazil, the reactions from international and European audiences to the dystopian black comedy were unsatisfactory. Brazil's lead character Sam, who has spent the film struggling against a bureaucracy that has pinned a string of terrorist attacks on him, ends the story thinking that he's evaded his captors and avoided torture. However, it's all revealed to be an illusion in his head as he stares, smiling madly into the middle distance and humming to himself. Studio head Sid Scheinberg demanded that the film be given a happier ending, cutting around the story and reusing footage where possible so that love interest Jill survives and Sam makes it out of the city to start a new life. But the egg landed firmly on the face of Universal when, having screened his version to critics in secret, Gilliam's Brazil won a plethora of awards. It forced the studio's hand and they released it in its original edited format. Ergo, the version of this film that you would struggle to see today is the Sid Scheinberg cut. It did appear on a Criterion DVD and Laserdisc of all things, but but with technology moving forward and not always so well preserved, it may be a matter of time before this version and its sappier ending goes from hard to find to totally lost. Number 5. Misery a difference between the Stephen King novel Misery and the 1990 Rob Rayner directed movie adaption became its most iconic moment. In the book, crazed superfan Annie tries to stop the escape of her captured favourite writer Paul Sheldon by removing his foot with an axe. In order for Paul to come out of the motion picture version in a more triumphant way, Rayner and company decided it might be best for Annie to simply smash Paul's ankle in with a hammer. Seems like Paul can't catch a break either way. Almost certainly the smallest, most amusing but keen-eyed change to ever come from a test audience preview was the suggestion to reshoot the ending of Misery, where Paul, months later, is haunted by his experiences. Why? Because, and I quote, he needs to walk with a cane. Paul was too healthy after his experiences and it was too much of a suspension of disbelief. In all fairness, it's a good point, but it makes you wonder how many people called this out, because apparently it was enough of a pressing issue to fire up the production trucks again as the scene was indeed reshot. It's presumably almost identical, except this time Paul gets a walking stick to lean on. The caneless ending of Misery is not really something we particularly need, and as such it's something that has either been destroyed or locked away in a vault. Regardless, it's a fun story and an anomaly in an otherwise drama-free production. Number 4. World War Z World War Z's lead character is fairly standard zombie movie stuff. Brad Pitt's family man Jerry happens to be a former United Nations investigator, but he's just trying to keep his family safe. The closing moments of the film feature Jerry arriving in Wales to be reunited with his wife and daughters, and a montage of sequences that show how humanity fights against the zombie horde in the future. It's more than a little odd as it sort of comes out of left field, leaving World War Z without the big climax you'd expect from a big budget zombie flick. Reason being is that this wasn't the intended conclusion, and that the montage we see features already shot footage for the original and much darker ending. An entire third act of the film saw Jerry fighting his way through the Russian tundra, but when the studio was shown what was being pieced together they were unhappy with the disconnect. Jerry had gone from warm family man to a grizzled bearded zombie killing badass and it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Presented with options they decided to come up with something else rather than soldier on. Thus the original ending of the film was never quite finished. What did exist was excised into oblivion with only thin slices featuring in the final cut. So whilst we can get a taste of what could have been, we can only wonder about the rest. Number 3. Somewhere in Time 1980s romance fantasy flick Somewhere in Time is, by general consensus, a fine if not fairly middle of the road film. It explores time travel as obtained by hypnosis so that our lead character Richard Coulier, portrayed by Christopher Reeve, can meet his otherwise unobtainable girl of his dreams that he sees in an old photograph. Something else that appears to be unobtainable is the original cut of the film. Somewhere in Time ends with the death of its protagonist and through the point of view of the lens we see Coulier's spirit finally reunited with the woman he loves. It's a fine ending but a 
according to Hollywood Elsewhere's Jeffrey Wells, it was much better the way that he remembers it. Executing a technique that was rare in those days, Somewhere in Time originally ended with an extraordinary and extra long tracking shot that led us through the halls of the hospital and into the arms of Coulier's love very slowly and very deliberately. In the 1980s, with very little trickery available, the shot would have been incredibly hard to capture. According to the film cinematographer Isidore Mankowski, Universal Studios thought that it was too long and trimmed it down to a few edits, fading parts of the shot together to get the point across quicker. And then, well, it appears they threw the reel in the bin, since as far as Mankowski knows, the original version no longer exists. Number 2. Dawn of the Dead after being held up in a shopping mall for months following the end of the world, Dawn of the Dead's surviving duo of Peter and Fran find themselves in jeopardy as raiding bikers cause their safe haven to become suddenly far less safe. With barriers and defences now down, hordes of zombies begin to pour up into the shopping mall's offices. Their once bunker and now home under attack, the two race to the roof to get aboard their helicopter to make their uncertain journey onwards. Whilst the version we've all seen ends ambiguously, the original script was a lot darker and more definitive about things. According to special effects guru Tom Savini, the suicide ending was indeed shot. George A. Romero spent some years denying this before admitting in a DVD commentary that some work had been done on it. Evidence of it still exists in the film, making this the only entry on a list that you still kind of see. Peter puts a gun to his head for a moment, and Fran's way out was to include deliberately decapitating herself on the helicopter's blades, a chilling callback to an earlier scene with an unfortunate zombie. At the very least, knowing that the script called for Peter and Fran to commit suicide makes the final scenes of Dawn make a lot more sense. Number 1. Deep Blue Sea Proving that the power that test audiences have, Deep Blue Sea not only has an original ending that nobody has seen in 20 years, but also the choices made in exercising it actually affect the finished product. Susan McAllister, as played by Saffron Burrows, morphs throughout the film as a woman researching shark brain tissue looking for the cure for Alzheimer's disease into someone fighting for her life and killing off her specimens in order to save herself and others. In the original ending, Susan survives the ordeal. Test audiences were apparently distraught as they had concluded that Susan was the real villain of the piece. After all, if it wasn't for her work, the sharks wouldn't be attacking at all. Thus, a one-day reshoot occurred, and thanks to some new CGI, Susan is gobbled up as she tries to make her escape. Is it penance for her so-called misgivings, or a very sudden and brutal death for a character who is caught in an unfortunate set of circumstances? The jury is still out if the ending of Deep Blue Sea was the right call, but whatever you think of Susan's fate, it's an interesting change to make. Moreover, it's created an alternate ending that's been lost to time. And that's the list. Head down into the comments to let us know what you thought of this video. Are any of these endings something that you're dying to see? And are there other alternative endings that you can no longer see that we missed? Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more, and hit the notification bell. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com, and have a good week.